Hi, my name's Alex Walford. I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video, I want to show you an end-to-end -end example where I'm going to take data from an IoT device, which in this case is an Intel Edison. I have a little sensor um, that's uh, reading temperature and humidity on there, and I'm going to write that um, to a couple of destinations. One of them is going to be Elasticsearch, and then the other one is going to be InfluxDB. Um, so in order to um, get the, the data um, off in, a, in, a, in an efficient and robust way, I'm going to be using Avro, and I'm going to serialize this data using the schema registry. And there's a couple of um, benefits to doing that. We'll get into that in a sec. Um, so that's what's happening here. Then this um, is Kafka Connect. I'm going to be using um, the Elasticsearch uh, sync and the InfluxDB sync. Um, just, just to write out. Now, Influx has a little bit of a nuance to it. The messages need to be formatted in a certain way, and so I've written a small Kafka Streams job to reformat those messages. So I think the first thing we should do is have a look at what's running on this um, little IoT device and see how, how are we serializing those messages. So let's um, pop over to the code. Now, all the code for this is going to be in the, in the uh, GitHub. Um, link below in the in the comments below, and um, there's a couple of um, Maven plugins that I want to point out. The first one is the Avro Maven plugin. Look, we have a source and an output directory. It's going to look for the source in the source directory for Avro schema files. So the Avro schema is defined in a in a JSON format, and then the output from this is going to be a Java object. Look, you can see it says auto generated by Avro. Um, don't edit directly. So um, this has been generated. Um, for us, which is uh, quite handy. Another another plugin that I want to point out is Codehouse's uh, Build Helper Maven plugin. It's going to make sure that those uh, generated classes are available uh, when when the the project is built. Um, so it has the, those um, classes included. So next thing. Let's have a quick look. This is a Spring app, by the way. Let's have a quick look, Spring Boot, uh, at the Kafka config here. There's a couple of things I want to point out. The first thing is, look, this key value serializer class. This is going to be using the Kafka Avro serializer from Confluent. Um, this um, property also needs um, the schema registry URL, so we have a key value pair for that. Another thing that um, is noteworthy, just while we're here, there is an interceptor class that I've added right here. This monitoring producer interceptor. This is going to give us a ton of instrumentation, um, which will allow us to set alerts and whatnot. We'll take a look at that in uh, Confluent uh, Control Center in a little bit. So that's the uh, that's those are the producer configs. Now let's have a look at the uh, the thing that's um, writing the data. So here, look, we've got this scheduled run every two seconds. Grab a sensor reading create uh, an Avro um, POJO and um, send that to this topic. So that, that's what's happening here. That is how we integrate with the schema registry. And um, let's have a, have a little look at um, one of the advantages of doing this. So the first, first thing I want to point out, look, I have this Kafka Avro console producer. And you can see this is deserializing the messages. They, they appear on the screen as JSON. Now, if I consume the, this from this topic in a, in a raw format without the uh, Avro um, uh, deserializer, you can see this is this is how they look in binary format. Now compare the size of the messages between these two. The the um, Avro serialized messages are a fraction of the size. So I think that's a that's a really important thing that can be a big cost driver of an IoT type use case. You know, um, by by switching to Avro, you can you can save a lot of bandwidth. Um, there's another benefit of Avro that I want to point out here. So I, I've written a small uh, test case. Um, so let's uh, say we're going to write a record to this topic, temperature humidity test three. Um, this this uh, message just contains um, Fahrenheit and humidity. So let me pop over 
to um, my topics here, you'll see that this message, uh, uh, sorry, this topic has been created. Go into the schema. Look, here's the, the schema has been created. That's great. So one thing I can do, I can edit the schema, and I can say, make this forward compatible. Um, so I can I can evolve this schema. So the next thing I, I want to do is write a, uh, a new message. Now, this message is basically the same as the other schema, but the scenario in this case is I added air pressure to this sensor. Um, this is might be something that you might do to an IoT device, change the firmware, capture some new piece of information. So if I write this, look, the message has gone through. That's great. Let's pop over to my console consumer here, and you can see, look, I've got um, you know the original message that did not contain pressure. Now I have pressure. It's a slightly different version. That worked great. Very good. Evolved the schema, no problems. But let's see what happens if I try and put something that's completely crap in there. So this is a, a completely different schema. It doesn't contain uh, temperature and humidity, for example. So look at this. This has first name and last name. It just doesn't look like it belongs there. So I'm going to run this, write bad schema, and it barfed. You can see the red right down here. Um, here we go. Schema being registered is incompatible with an earlier schema. So this is another thing that schema registry gives us. It gives us some level of control and governance um, to make sure that we're not writing crap into the topics um, and uh, uh, and the messages are very small. So those are, those are kind of the, the evolution and the, the small messages. Those are the big wins, in my opinion, with the, the schema registry. So let's uh, have a look and see what we've got next. So let, we are going to persist this data. Now this is in this Kafka topic. We're going to persist this to Elasticsearch. And, and um, I typically, when I create uh, a connect job, I typically cr create uh, a little JSON doc. I'll do this in a, in a text editor, uh, and I will use a curl command uh, to post it. I don't usually use the uh, UI in uh, Confluent Control Center because sometimes there are properties, You know, particularly if you're using things like schema registry, the properties are not always exposed um, in, in the GUI. So I, I usually just look at the, the docs for the connector. So in this case, here's, here's what I did to get the Elasticsearch working. Um, um, I, I uh, created this little JSON um, snippet right here. I plug this into this curl command. You can see the arrow points to where I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stick this. And then I run that curl command and it will run in a fault tolerant way, uh, which, which is uh, fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's being persisted into um, Elasticsearch. We can pop over, look, here's my Here's my Kibana dashboard that is uh, visualizing this, and, and I recently went away, um, and uh, you can see, you know, I didn't have the air conditioning, and it got pretty hot in my house, 92 degrees right here. But and now I'm back, and you can see, you know, turn the air conditioning on, and we've got sensible temperatures again. Very good. Now the next the next part of this, um, if you remember, look, we had um, we want to persist to InfluxDB using uh, Kafka Connect. In order to do that, we have to um, transform the message a little bit. So um, this is what we're getting from the device. Key value pairs, it's a flat JSON document. This is what InfluxDB needs. Um, you can see that you know we need to define a measurement. We have tags, these are key value pairs. The values go, go in here as Alexa, cancel. Uh, the values go in here as um, also, you know, key value pairs. Um, so that's uh, that's what we need to do. I wrote a Kafka streams job to do that. Let's pop over and have a very quick look uh, and see what that looks like. Um, so again, we have those uh, monitoring uh, interceptors for our instrumentation. Make sure we've got no latency alert on that if necessary. And he and here's our little. Uh, stream uh, app. Let me get rid of this Maven uh, plugin thing. Yeah, so look right here. We're defining a stream right here. Uh, we're doing this is basically a for each in our Kafka streams job. We're taking for each key value. Um, we're building this um, 
influx uh, formatted uh, record and then we are going to return that new influx formatted record and we're going to write it to this topic uh, and that topic is going to be the, just, it, using Kafka Connect it's, it's, it's going to um, just persist that straight into influx and if we pop over to influx here you can see you know here here's the data in influx same as what we had in uh, elastic um, but it's now in influx let's have a very quick look at the uh, the streams the monitoring what those interceptors have given us so if we have over consumption this could be like a bug in our code or something like that where we're produce we're consuming the same messages more than once that sort of thing uh, more, we're consuming the same messages more more than we expect to. Um, then um, you know that would be overconsumption. So it's showing that everything's fine. If there's any latencies, these these are kind of uh, you know captured here, and you, and you can set up um, alerts. So if we go to alerts, then we could create you know if the if the latency gets beyond X number of milliseconds, then you know trigger an alert that sort of thing. But anyway. That was it. That was uh, taking um, data from an IoT device, serializing it with the schema registry. We looked at why schema registry, the small messages, the schema evolution, um, the monitoring interceptors. We had a little Kafka streams um, to adjust the format. And uh, I hope that was interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.